Now, the issue of European security, in fact, uh, is a major one. Uh, in terms of listening right there to Mario Draghi, it wasn't just Italy. Poland, the Czech Republic, and the Baltic states have called for the EU to admit Ukraine. Other leaders have said that will need more time to happen. Still, in just four weeks, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has completely shaken some long-held diplomatic views, prompting countries like Sweden, Finland to consider uh, and this is significant, NATO membership. So this is sure to be a central topic when U.S. President uh, Joe Biden arrives in Brussels Wednesday for meetings with NATO allies. To talk more about that, I want to bring in Alex Stubb. He is the former prime minister of Finland and the director of the School of Transnational Governance at the European University Institute. Really good to have you uh, with us uh, this evening as we discuss this. You know, we, we heard from the um, Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peshkov, and he says that they are looking for uh, Ukrainian neutrality, something Finland knows something about the, you know something about this and has for decades. I mean, do you find this a bit duplicitous on the top uh, in terms of the Kremlin acting as if this would somehow meet their demands if only Ukraine would remain neutral? Yeah, I guess it's a diplomatic way of putting it. And of course, you know, Finland had its own experience of neutrality during the Cold War when we were very much a neutral country because of necessity. We didn't want that. We wanted to be part of the West. We wanted to be part of Western institutions, but that had to be subdued until the Cold War ended. So I guess my recommendation to President Zelensky is not to take the bait, and I don't think he's going to do that either. Ukraine has chosen its side, and that side is the West, it's Europe, it's freedom, it's liberal democracy, not Russia. And I take your point in that, and yet in four weeks we have seen the international order absolutely upended and transformed. I know that you think about this every hour. It is the Ukrainian civilians right now that are paying the price for that. When we lay out diplomacy in the week to come, uh, being in a really unique position in Finland, what would you advise uh, you know, European countries, including Finland, to do at this point to try and support Ukraine? Well, the starting point is to understand the change, the fundamental change, and basically the division of Europe again into two. One is a totalitarian, authoritarian Russia, and the other one is then a democratic uh, and more cooperative uh, Europe. Obviously, all avenues of diplomacy have to be sought, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I myself was involved in mediating the peace in the war in Georgia in 2008, we did it in five days with six points, but the bottom line is that the stakes were much lower than, than they were now. And that's why I think we are at a moment, you know, where uh, idealism hits realism. I don't see a ceasefire coming out of this. And that is a very stark assessment for the people suffering through those Russian bombardments right now. So the question is, what does the EU do about it? What does NATO do about it? What do you advise that U.S. and its allies do to try and get Putin to the table right now? Because it is he who does not want to negotiate any kind of ceasefire or peace right now. Yeah. The starting point is to continue more of the same. In other words, continue to roll on the sanctions. And I think the next step needs to be an oil embargo and then obviously the waning off of uh, gas exports. The second thing which is more important to uh, Ukraine right now is, of course, arms exports. We need to keep them flowing uh, because we can already see that the Ukrainian military uh, and all the soldiers there are doing an excellent job in fighting off the Russians. The third and final point is, you know, I, I don't think we can get Putin to the negotiating table. Remember, this is about him. It's about his legacy. It's about historic and great Russia or making Russia great again. And he simply cannot step back from the situation. So that's why I just don't see a ceasefire or diplomatic avenue at the moment. Again, though, if, if that is the truth, you've been in Finland, uh, you've been canny observers of the first Cold War. What do you predict then this will look like in the weeks to come? Mm, it's hard to say, but perhaps I would, you know, divide it and say that, you know, we had a hot war with uh, the Soviet Union during the Winter War and the War of Continuation, World War II. Then we had a Cold War with them, and that's when we sort of found the balance in our bearings and stuck to neutrality. But now we're in the middle of a hot war, so the, the, the only advice I can give to the Ukrainians is to, you know, keep at it. And, and, and to be honest, I think the Russian military, and I'm not a military expert, 
for all intents and purposes, is looking quite weak uh, at the moment. So the longer this goes on, uh, every day to a certain extent is a victory for Ukraine. Yeah, and it's not only a victory for Ukraine in terms of the Western allies to see that Russian military depleted in this way uh, obviously means they perhaps would not be a threat to others as well. Uh, Alex Stubb, I uh, really appreciate your input here.